Good morning. A sneaky bacon sandwich. I'll just leave it down there so you can't see it. Mmm. I was out a minute ago feeding our sheep and our goats. And Wallace, the big goat, says hi to everybody who knows Professor Wallace. And something struck me. A bolt out of the blue. No, it wasn't a branch or um, Henry butting me. It was to answer a fundamental question that I think has never really been satisfactorily answered. And that is, why in the United Kingdom from November till March isn't the sky blue? Okay, Sparty Pants, you know the answer. Because it's cloudy. That's not the correct answer. Today, I'm going to tell you something about light that you probably didn't know. So like a lot of my very small viewership, I grew up in England where the sky really isn't blue very often. It's only blue in Arizona or a textbook. The textbook answer says it's all to do with Rayleigh scattering. Lord Rayleigh, what's he got to do with it? And equations like these that kind of explain that oxygen and nitrogen in our Earth's atmosphere scatters, oh, I hate that word, scatters light and we see it as blue. Meh? The word scattering is just really annoying. When I think of scattering, I think of throwing a cup of rice across the kitchen or sowing seeds in a farm. It's got nothing to do with blue light. Rant alert. So much of science gets things wrong. So much of science <laughs> explains things really badly. It kind of half explains them and just leaves you hanging going, duh. The best science is a steam engine. It has a fire, it has a boiler, the boiler makes steam, the steam goes into a cylinder, the cylinder has a piston in it, it pushes a connecting rod which turns a wheel and the engine goes down the track. Steam engine physics, I love it. But so much of it isn't taught like that. And the classic example of bad physics, of bad education, of bad TV science is answering the question about colour. Why is the sky blue? As you and I, as a kid growing up in Britain, looked up and went, it's not blue. <laughs> and the explanation that I was told by my parents and at school is obviously wrong. The sky in England is not blue, and it's not because it's covered in clouds. There's something missing that they're not telling you, and I'm going to attempt to explain in steam engine analogy language today why the sky isn't blue in England. <laughs> Who remembers going on holiday in an aeroplane? and taking off on a charter flight from Gatwick to Marbella or Mallorca or somewhere through the grey layers of clouds and then bursting out above the clouds over Kent and there's blue sky. You go, oh my God, up there, it is blue. Down there, there's no blue at all. Ooh. It was always so exciting and it felt like the beginning of a holiday, especially if you went in the winter, to come up through the clouds into blue sky. But why isn't it blue beneath the clouds? Or slightly blue even, like a hint of blue. But it's not, it's just grey or kind of white light not very bright. If you believe your teacher, if you believe your parents, if you believe Lord Rayleigh, <laughs> light is scattered oh, by oxygen and nitrogen in our atmosphere. All of our atmosphere, we're told. But hang on, it doesn't work, does it? 
sky most of the time isn't blue. It's only blue when you go on holiday. It's only blue in a textbook. It's only blue in the south of France or in Arizona. It's not blue in Shepherd's Bush, is it? Why? <laughs> And that's what I'm going to discuss with you today. Why isn't on a grey day in England, when there's cloud cover, they're thousands of feet up, but why isn't the bit beneath the clouds, the atmosphere, full of nitrogen and oxygen, from the cloud down to us, why isn't that even slightly blue, or a blue tinge, you know? It's not. It's totally doesn't have any blue colour to it. It seems to be just transparent. The colour of light is just the colour of the clouds and reflected off the ground. There's no blue tinge to the colour of atmosphere. And that's what you were taught, that the atmosphere scatters light and makes the light blue. What really happens <laughs> is that only a tiny bit of our Earth's atmosphere scatters or transmutes or changes the frequency of white light from the sun into a blue wavelength. It's only the teeny top outer atmosphere, the bit just before we go into space because the oxygen and the nitrogen atoms are so spaced out that the blue filtering, the blue augmentation, notice I'm not using the word scattering. It's only that oxygen and nitrogen that's really spread out that has the effect of altering white light to make it look blue. It actually affects the frequency of light. But when the atmosphere is more dense, nearer the ground, above Westfield Shopping Centre, or above Burnley Football Ground, or above Glasgow Rangers Ibrox Park, it doesn't work. <laughs> there is no blue light created at lower atmospheric levels. If you can't see all the way up through the atmosphere out into space, the sky's not going to look blue. That's why when you blast it off from Gatwick and burst through the cloud layer into an atmosphere that doesn't have clouds above it and you can see all the way to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere, suddenly the sky is blue. But when you came back and descended into Crawley Car Park, you were back in dull Britain with no blue sky. It's because you live in a very, very sad country that isn't the same as your textbook, where you can't see right up through the atmosphere to the edge of space. Only those lucky devils who live in Arizona, Texas, or the south of France can see blue sky. If you live in Halsden, or Harwich, sky isn't blue. The truth is out there. Mm -hmm.